Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-hosts, Kiana Holliman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, look, looking forward to a great conversation uh, with our next guest. No, absolutely. But uh, before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to the folks here at uh, Fort Johnson, uh, uh, formerly Fort Polk. Uh, they had their redesignation ceremony, and I'm here live from Leesville, Louisiana, uh, which is very hot and humid. But I'm, I'm a Louisiana native anyway, so I'm, I'm used to it. Uh, but they had a beautiful redesignation ceremony. And for those that don't know about the story of Sergeant William Henry Johnson, uh, p- please read up on it because uh, he's got a rem- remarkable story. So. Uh, But without further ado, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. Today, we have an inspiring guest and a true American hero. He served in the Army for more than 25 years and deployed during Desert Storm and Operation Enduring Freedom. During his service in Afghanistan, he was injured by a roadside bomb, losing both legs and sustaining a major injury to his right arm. He went on to serve eight more years in the Army before retiring. He received three Purple Hearts, three Bronze Stars, the Legion of Merit, the Meritorious Service Medal, and the Army Commendation Medal. He's now a motivational speaker and actor. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to retired Army Colonel Gregory Gadsed. Hey. Uh oh, we got we got some sound. We turn them on, uh, team. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear you now. How you doing, sir? Hey, I'm well. Well, thank you for the introduction, uh, Kiana, and, and welcome. Uh, thank you all for for having me be here. I, I would like to make one correction. I only have one Purple Heart, so that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, yeah. One I, I is think, enough. I think I think one is <laughs> enough. Yeah, I was gonna say the same. <laughs> Awesome, sir. Well, you know, thank you so much for joining us today. And also, I just want to wish you a, a, a happy Army birthday. Well, thank you. That's right. Uh, it is our it is our Army. And so t- technically, it's your birthday, too, there, Mr. Air Force, because <laughs> you came from the Army. <laughs> well, well, yeah, we, the Air Force Don't is a real... We, we're, we're a rib of the Army. Uh, so. That's right. That's right. I think the army turns 248 years old today, and uh, they're they're well into. They, they've been drawing social security for a long, long time. So, uh, yeah. big, big shout out to my my army brother out there. I did, I did have a, a bet with a sergeant major one time. Uh, this is the only time I've really actually sung the the army song in its full entirety. Uh, I lost a bet, uh, and I, I I know you played, uh, you played at West Point. Um, at right. the, the U.S. Military Academy football, but uh, they they lost to the well, Air Force lost to the Army a couple of years ago, and I bet the Sergeant Major that if uh, if Air Force won, then he had to get on the social media platform and sing the Air Force song, and if the Army won, I had to get on. So I did it on my social media. It looked like I was a hostage uh, situation. It, it it wasn't the greatest uh, rendition of the Army song though. Right. Right. Well, you know, you 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 um you honored your uh, you honored your commitment, so that's all that's all we can ask. You know, it is also uh, uh, it is also simultaneously the uh, the American flag's uh, birthday as well. It's Flag Day, absolutely. So, and so, uh, and so our army, day. yeah, our army is uh, one year older than our country. Oh my goodness, that's something that uh, I'm sure a lot of our viewers did not know that. Yeah, yeah, just to put things in perspective, we needed an army to create the country. So, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> that's, that's true. So, can you let our viewers know where you're coming to us from? Yes, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm uh, here from my disheveled office here in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, in in Mount Vernon. You know, uh, right down the street from um, George Washington, um, which everybody I'm sort of familiar is kind of readily known as the father of our, of our nation. So uh, I'm in that 
section of Fairfax County. Absolutely. That's awesome. And you have such an incredible story. Can you take us back to the beginning? What led you to join the military? Well, it was, uh, you know, it was, um, wasn't exactly, uh, the military wasn't exactly on my list. Um, I uh, had dreams of, uh, of someday being a, a pro football player. And, and I had done, you know, the things that many young men do that uh, have that as a goal. I've worked hard, you know, in school and worked hard on the gridiron. And, and I had hoped to earn a scholarship. Uh, in fact, I thought I did. And I was offered a scholarship to the University of Virginia. And, uh, and really kind of as a last second, um, I was a, a casualty of um, maybe not um, not meeting the needs that the team thought they needed. And so, uh, uh, again, very last minute, they um, they rescinded their, their scholarship offer to me. And I frankly did not have another opportunity. I didn't have a plan B. A, uh, a, re a football recruiter from West Point had come to my high school to, uh, to recruit another of uh, my teammates. And my coach just suggested that they take a look at me um, and uh, as a potential uh, player that could go there. And, and I, I, I took a visit up to West Point and, uh, under, and you know, it was, a, it was playing football at the highest level. And I, I say looking back, I probably went there with a little bit of a, a chip on my shoulder because I, I really wanted to prove that I could play football at the highest levels. And, and that's why... Uh, that began my uh, my my, uh, mil uh, my journey with the United States military and the Army. So in 2007, while traveling back from a memorial service in Afghanistan for soldiers from a sister unit, the vehicle you were traveling in was struck by a roadside bomb, resulting in devastating injuries. So can you tell us about that night in the aftermath? Yes. Well, um, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's a permanent. Um, it's a permanent memory for me. Um, again, um, I had just attended a memorial service for for two young men, um, First Lieutenant Jones and um, Specialist Sunson, who had uh, been killed three days earlier by an improvised explosive device. So I can tell you that my my heart, my emotions, my mind were very heavy with uh, with the sacrifice of these young men and their families. And so, um, you know, with that, um, we did uh, head back to my headquarters in a four vehicle patrol. And, and that's when my vehicle was, was hit by a command detonated um, improvised explosive device. And um, it didn't quickly, it didn't take me long to realize or, uh, what it was and, and that I was in bad shape. And, and ultimately, um, you know, my teammates, uh, uh, the men of my organization, um, would locate me uh, and start performing life-threatening, uh, life-saving uh, first aid on me, got me triaged um, uh, so that I could be evacuated. Um, um, at that point, you know, there's a whole large team uh, of, of medical professionals, um, our Air Force, you know, uh, Sergeant Osby, um, uh, Command Master Sergeant Osby, uh, get me back to the States, you know, so four days after I'm wounded, I'm landing at Air, Air Andrews Air Force Base, uh, heading off to, to Walter Reed. Um, ultimately, as a result of those injuries, I, I would, um, um, uh, they would have to take one of my legs to save my life. And, and I actually made the decision for them to take the, the other leg. And, um, and uh, that was, you know, sort of the, uh, the, the beginning of the end of one chapter of my life and the beginning of another. So, yeah, it's, um, and, and I'm, I'm glad you kind of called out the, the, uh, your, your teammates and, and everybody along the, the way that helped you, you know, uh, along the way, because, you know, we, we may represent different services or, uh, different jobs, functional, but, um, we're all on the same team and, and we're all here for each other. And so, uh, just even in that moment of of just you know chaos, uh, the team comes together to, to to pull you out of there uh, and get you get you to a safe place. So that's you know that's that's something that our service members do 
every single day on the battlefield. And um, I think, and I always try to highlight that, especially when we're having conversations like this. So uh, thank you for sharing that. And, uh, and we appreciate that. Now we know uh, you, you had a very horrific injury, but uh, you decided to stay on active duty uh, in the army. So kind of what, what went into that decision? And, um, you know, I'm not sure if, if many folks would have chose to keep continue serving. Yes. Um, well, I certainly, um, you know, went through some, some challenging moments, um, um, uh, emotionally and, and mentally, you know, you really don't have a plan B when something like this happens to you. You don't really have a, a, a real vision, uh, of, of what your life has in store for you. Um, but I was, uh, you know, first and foremost, you know, I was, uh, I was still accountable as a as a father, as a husband, and as a soldier, and, no, and none of that changed because I got wounded, and um, I recognized um, or, or started to appreciate that I was not defined by by what I didn't have, but I was defined by what I did, and I still had a strong desire to continue to serve. I felt that I was, you know, uh, I, that I was still a soldier. Um, I certainly would have to do things differently. Um, but I, I, I would I joke a little bit and, and just say that, you know, at this point in my life, the Army wasn't really paying me for how fast I could run. And, uh, <laughs> and so I felt that I could continue to, to contribute. And, and so um, I tried to make that argument, make that case. And, and ultimately, uh, the Army agreed and, and uh, approved my extension. And so, and then you went on to lead the Army Wounded Warrior Program and serve as garrison commander at Fort Belvoir. Did your approach to leadership change after your injury? Well, um, I wouldn't say that my approach to leadership changed, but I would I would acknowledge that um, my humility and uh, certainly, um, um, uh, I think was enhanced. Um, you know, I wasn't, uh, again, I, I needed help in life and, and that is certainly very humbling to understand, uh, that you're going to need some help to, to do the things that you need to do. And, um, and I think that humility did, um, uh, improve my, um, improve my leadership because it when you when you're I say when you're humble you understand that uh, that 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 all that you do in life you don't do by yourself you do with the support of, of, of a team with, of teammates and, and and perhaps it enhanced um, my understanding of of being part of a team. So since your retirement, you've also become a motivational speaker. So what kind of inspired you to become a motivational speaker? And why do you feel it's important for you to share your story with others? Well, um, I would I would say I, I'm, I'm truly I don't I, I don't there's no better word for motivational speaker um, that I've been able to come up with. Um, I like to say that I like to share my experiences in life. I like to share my life. Uh, and I'm willing to share my life. Um, it's my testimony, quite quite frankly. And um, and it it, uh, it was born out of a classmate, a teammate of mine uh, from West Point, who happened to be a coach for the New York Giants uh, in 2007. And uh, and he asked me to share um, um, uh, my my experiences uh, with with uh, the the New York Giants. And um, and I did, and and it, uh, it was a message that resonated, and and uh, and ultimately um, it helped turn their season around, and uh, and um, I would get a chance to address them uh, the night before they played the undefeated uh, Patriots in Super Bowl 40, 42, and of course they won, and so I suppose in a small way that uh, in a large way that launched my motivational speaking career. Um, but it, for me, it's it's really about life. It's about my journey. It's about sharing um, uh, my testimony, and um, and that's all I can do. And uh, you know, for whoever receives it, 
uh, they've got to figure out what it means to them and, and, and how it might hopefully put their life, uh, give their life a different perspective. So uh, my question is, so were you initially, even after kind of early on the injury, were you willing to kind of open up and talk about it or did it take a while before you were kind of willing to kind of, because I know, you know, I've talked to a, a, a lot of veterans on this podcast about uh, them kind of closing closing off to the world and not sharing those experiences until later on in life uh, when, when it actually becomes uh, therapeutic and and it helps helps the, the person themselves get, get those emotions and feelings out of their system. Four months after I was wounded. So I four don't months. want that. Son. Four months. Awesome. And so, um, you know, and we all we all have our, our own struggles in life. And uh, so for folks, what advice do you give people that are kind of experiencing a devastate, devastating setback or any type of life change? You, you, you got any good right. words of wisdom for us? Sure. Um, so first of all, um, you know, my, my thought is that, look, there, there are certainly bad things that happen. Um, there's no there's never a way that I would classify what happened to me as, as good. Um, but there's a cliche that attitude is everything. And um, our attitude and approach at life is is um, is what we do control. And I believe in, in focusing our energy on the things that we can tr can control and not giving it away to the things that we can't. And so that means that we got to let go of the past. And that means that we can't live a day that we're not promised. All we can do is be present. And if we can be present, we now have a chance of being our best. And that's and that's my goal every day is is to be present, uh, be be my best, and uh, and hopefully that that equals peace for me. That's awesome. And um, so you're an inspiration to a lot of people. Um, so who are some of the people that inspire you? Well, I, I, I definitely have to start with uh, my parents. Um, you know, they, they, you know, they uh, raised me and, and really, um, you know, what, for me, what's really profound about um, uh, how they raised me, um, you know, uh, parents born in the, in the Jim Crow South in the forties uh, that uh, had to overcome tremendous adversity and uh and and they and they passed that on to me they shared it with me but they they didn't share it with hate or or distrust but they shared it with love and uh and it was a great example of of um of understanding that life is not easy but i could overcome and uh i i have to include my uh my family my my wife of 34 years my kids my grandkids um uh th their unconditional love um certainly um uh, uh, has underwritten um you know my ability to 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 um to push through uh the tough times in my life and um countless countless uh service members you know, um, uh, mentors, uh, peers, uh, subordinates alike um, have inspired me to to, uh, to to be my best, and uh, and um, and so that's what I would say in order. So you also serve on the board of Army Emergency Relief which is an organization that is a great partner to the exchange. I actually received a scholarship in undergrad from the Army Emergency Relief Fund. It was like a renewable one. So thank you to the organization <laughs> for supporting me as well as an Army brat. But exchange shoppers can donate to AER at checkout every time they shop their PX or BX or even online. And last year, exchange shoppers donated nearly $1 million to AER. So amazing, amazing support right there. So for viewers who may not know, can you tell us a bit more about AER and your role with the organization? Yes. So, um, uh, thank you. And, and I, um, and congratulations. That's good to, it's, it's not always nice to know and meet someone that can, can, can share their testimonial about what, 
what AER has done uh, for them. You know, in, in, a, in a nutshell, I would say AER is about soldiers and families taking care of soldiers and families. And, uh, you know, there's no, there's no perfect organization. There, there's no perfect policy. And, and, for, the, and for the instances where um, uh, policy and regulation are not able to support a, a family or a soldier in need, that's where uh, Army Emergency Relief steps in. Um, as a living, uh, you know, I, I never imagined my entire life that I would ever uh, need support from uh, AER, but, uh, but AER was there from my family when, um, when I was evacuated uh, from Iraq, um, you know, no clothes to my name and just, you know, again, trying to get my bearings in. And, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, a simple, something as simple as a, as a gift card so I could get some clothes to wear uh, the first time I stepped out of the hospital uh, was invaluable. And so, um, and those are, again, those are, or, or, or cases where there, there's, uh, there's not a, a policy or regulation um, that can, can fill those things in. And, and um, I'm proud to be a supporter. I'm proud to be on the board. I'm proud to be an advocate for, uh, uh, this, or for this organization, this nonprofit, and, and what they're able to do for our soldiers and family members and retirees. Yeah, I'm just amazed. Um, just getting to to know all of these these uh organizations and AER being definitely one of the uh you know premier organizations that 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 help out uh service members in need just just to know the plethora of of, of opportunity for for veterans and service members and um uh, and, and families to to benefit i didn't you know i think kiana probably told me that a couple of years ago but i forgot that she did get a scholarship from AER. So it's just refreshing to know that, you know, you, you, you sacrifice to serve the country and then you got organizations like AER there are, are there when you need us or when they, when we need them, I'm sorry. Absolutely. So, so we, and we talked about uh, a lot of different ways that you were honored. Uh, you got your, your purple heart, you got uh, three bronze stars, Legion of Merit and things of those nature. But, uh, and you kind of touched your with the New York Giants. We heard you got a couple of Super Bowl rings uh, as well. And so, can you tell us about that? Or, well, uh, just uh, to further extend uh, um, my story is, you know, when uh, when this when the uh, Patriots um, um, uh, when the Giants beat the Patriots in Super Bowl forty two and again in forty six, I was uh, I was uh, an adopted. Um, uh, member of the New York Giants by then, and and um, able to you know uh, be a mentor, be an outset, an outside set of eyes to to share my um, share my observations with with players and coaches alike. Um, you know, um, they continue to um, uh, uh, honor me as a true member of the team with uh, with the same Super Bowl rings that the players and coaches received. Yeah, well, I mean. As a as a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan, I you know I I, I, I don't know how I feel about the whole the whole New York Giants thing, but I appreciate the fact that you know your, your life started kind of primarily. You, you, you shouldn't have told me that because if I known this, I wouldn't be on this interview with you right now. Oh my goodness! I, I, you know I I don't know if this is is going to get me in trouble, but you know saying you're a Dallas Cowboy fan. <laughs> While you're still in active duty, is grounds for your analysis. Command <laughs> your analysis, right? Because well, so there's something you're on something, my friend. <laughs> you you just mentioned that today's flag day, and, and and of course the Cowboys are America's team. So we're we're just one day younger than than the than the United States Army. How about that? Who who said that? Dallas, <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? How do you guys put up with this guy? <laughs> oh, you just ignore it. You just start just ignoring it after yeah. a while. <laughs> well, I, I I will say this about and, and it's a compliment to the the Dallas Cowboy fans. You guys are you guys are certainly very loyal. I I, I, I often wonder what it's like to understand what's going to happen at the end of the season before and you still stay loyal to them. So, so well, I mean. Um, uh, like every year, we, this is our year. We're gonna win the Super Bowl. That's that's right. That's what I'm saying. You you're on that. You, it's like a dream. 
<laughs> well, but, but I think it's kind of cool cool how life kind of came full circle for you because you, you started off like uh, kind of revolved around football. You were coming into the military kind of based off of football. And, yeah. and the fact that in a, in a situation where, where uh, you know, you, you're not you, well, you're serving active duty, you retire, and then you're still kind of associated with football and, and, and something that you're passionate about. And you're also able to kind of share your story to inspire others in that in that field. So uh, I think I, I just think those parallels are just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Something that was so important in my life. And, you know, I thought that, uh, in fact, what I would say is, you know, having a dream of someday being a champion and then it literally happened. Um, yeah. And 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 there's another um, I say a lesser known uh, connection with football was my connection with the U University of Texas. So I do have a little Texas connection. Um, in okay. 2009, the 2009 10 season, I was uh, I was working um, with the University of Texas's football team because one of my classmates was uh, was the brother of Will Muschamp. And so I have a Big 12 championship ring when they beat Nebraska that, that, that had a Dominican Sioux on it. And we went to the national championship game, if you recall, against Alabama. And Colt McCoy um, was hurt in the second uh, uh, second uh, offensive series of the game. I, I, I would submit that Texas probably would have won that game if Colt didn't get hurt. But, um, you know, that's part of the game. And and, that, and Alabama deserves, uh, deserves the credit for it. So. Um, well, sir, well, sir, we're gonna. I mean, you seem like you're the secret sauce to winning, so we're gonna get you down to uh, Dallas and, and come talk to the, those uh, those Cowboys, and, and so we can go ahead and, and 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 we may even put you get you a ring too if you, if, if if that's what you want now. We'll what did he say? <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> so, in addition to not being a Dallas Cowboys fan. But also a, a military hero and a Super Bowl ring owner. You also have an acting career. And I actually just rewatched um, Battleship this weekend. Um, and then I actually watched a behind the scenes clip of you and how they made that fight scene. And I mean, you can throw some punches. Let me, like, I was like, oh, I don't want to be on the other side of, of that. Um, I, hey, so I, take every, I take everything back, sir. I take it all back. I, yeah, I don't, no. I don't have no, pro no problems it, at all. It didn't look like it was the behind the scenes. Didn't look like those were acting punches. Those were full on. <laughs> yeah, chief, <laughs> I would be careful. Um, but how did you yeah, land on the big screen? <laughs> how did you land on the big screen? And is that something you want to do more of? Uh, so uh, it it uh, t t like the first answer is um, it was not anything that was ever on my on my bucket list or wish list. And it was actually connected to, um, you know, the fact that the director of the movie, uh, Peter Berg is a uh, New Yorker and a lifelong New York Giants fan. And because of my relationship with the New York Giants, he, I, I literally got a call and that was, I was invited to audition for the movie. Um, I have a couple of more minor credits. Um, I was in one scene for a journal for Jordan uh, that Denzel Washington directed, and um, and I did ten episodes of a uh, of a of an educational series called The Inspectors, and then I, uh, this past season I did um, two episodes of NCIS Los Angeles. Wow. Well, that's awesome! I saw that too, and uh, Denzel. So, did you get to spend like meet and spend time with Denzel Washington? Yes, I worked with him all day. It was uh, it was one scene that we worked in all day. In fact, in Arlington Cemetery was the scene. It was the first time that um, uh, that uh, you know Hollywood was able to to film in um, in uh, Arlington Cemetery in over twenty years. But uh, yeah, I I, I literally um, was engaged with him for for an entire day. It was. It was special. I, they didn't need to pay me. I was just cool to hang out with Denzel. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so jealous. Denzel, yeah. I mean, he just, gosh. I mean, he just seems like it's just like an art form for him with acting. So if you're going to work with someone, it would be Denzel for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
So we have the military community watching us live, sir. What message would you like to share with our nation's heroes today? Well, on the, uh, on the Army's birthday, um, uh, being this day and, and, and uh, the other services, um, birthdays are, are soon to come. It's a, a, a little time again to, um, to reflect on uh, what it takes for us to, to be a, a, a strong nation. And, um, you know, I think about uh, uh, first the sacrifices of, uh, of our fallen and their families and, and folks like myself and even folks that may not necessarily have been wounded um uh we have a responsibility to make that sacrifice not uh, take that sacrifice in vain and um and we're only going to do that is if we work together so as we work as a team um you know uh there's a simple saying united we stand divided we fall and uh i just hope that um uh we continue to, to hold that to uh, first and foremost to um uh, our hearts as we live our days, as we, as we try to live our best lives, that it is not all about, uh, it's not all about me. It's not all about what I can get into, but understanding that, um, that uh, uh, we all, um, we all flourish when we all uh, uh, succeed. And, uh, and, and um, that's all I, that's all I got to say. Awesome. So, Great words of wisdom. We appreciate that, sir. You definitely, um, we, we can go faster alone, but farther together. And so uh, I, I I totally agree with those sentiments. Uh, so get, like are you working on any, so are you working on anything new? What's what's next for you? What We, we got any more movies down the pike or? Uh, uh, no movies. I, I have a book um, that that's, um, that's uh, coming out. Uh, it's called Waypoints: A, a Warrior's Journey um, uh, uh, to uh, Peace, um, and that's coming out uh, right right around Veterans Day this year. So maybe maybe you guys will carry it for us. Carry it for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, we definitely can. Uh, you know, definitely looking forward. Yes, sir. Definitely. Yep. And before we say goodbye, can you remind our viewers where they can go to follow you and keep up with you? Oh, um, I'm on uh, my Twitter handle, I guess, is I am Greg Gatson. Um, uh, Instagram is Gregory underscore 98. And, um, and, and Facebook is uh, at Gregory. Uh, it should be Dimitri uh, Gatson. Gregory Dimitri, D M I T R I Gadsden. Okay. So, yeah. Awesome. And we're going to plug this uh, this episode of Chief Chat. It's going to be on YouTube. So, uh, feel, feel free to everybody that's watching right now. You can rewatch with your friends or you can catch up with past episodes. Also, be sure to join us on Tuesday, June 20th at 11 a.m. Central as we welcome professional motorsports racing driver uh, Casey Curry. So, Sir, we appreciate your time and and, uh, and appreciate you sharing your story uh, with our viewers today. Uh, it's you know, it, you always, it, you know, I, I can't get enough of hearing you know the stories of our service members and the sacrifices. Uh, I, I've been in uh, close to twenty six years now, and um, you know, and, and I didn't have the military in my brain at all coming in. Uh, from high school, I had I thought I had a different path, but uh, this was absolutely one of the best decisions I made in my my life to to, to join a family because it is a family. Uh, you know, you might not always like your family, but you always love your family, whether whether it's blood family or military family. But uh, yeah, I've, the, the the folks that I've got a chance to meet and and the folks out there doing great work uh, to to secure these nation nations borders and uh, it's just you know, you know, I get emotional just even thinking about the journey of my life. So I appreciate you for sharing your journey uh, with us uh, um, uh, on today's show. I'm sorry. Well, thank you again for having me as a guest. And it's uh, certainly nice uh, to, to meet you all. And I appreciate everything that you 
that uh, you all do for, uh, to take care of our, our service members and their families. And, and um, God bless you all. Thank you. Absolutely. And sir, if you're ever in Dallas, uh, we, we will definitely uh, show you the building and, and probably get you some, some better swag than you got right now. So. <laughs> I got you, sir. I'll, I'll take care of you. Okay. I, I was, I was trying to, well, I should have worn my Super Bowl rings for you. You, you, how old, you know, I guess you, you're old enough to have seen them win a Super Bowl, but barely. <laughs> I, I was in high school, sir. I know so you I, ladies I, probably I, have never seen the Cowboys win a Super Bowl. We've heard things about it. Uh, I, think, heard I think, I think we've got to cut the show. Yeah. Huh? We've yeah. Heard. <laughs> it's a myth. Yeah. yeah he can. <laughs> <laughs> sir, sir, why you got to bring why you got to bring up old stuff? I, I don't understand. <laughs> That's right. You're right. I should be in the present. <laughs> 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 but yes, sir. If you don't mind hanging on until after after the live chat, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. But uh, I just want to okay. say again, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your service and your sacrifice, and what you continue to do uh, uh, post military career. After you hang up your uniform, you still continue to serve uh, a, a service member. So we, we appreciate you. Thank you. All right, Chief Chat folks. Uh, Chief Chat out. Y'all take care. <laughs>